More often than not, instead of looking at single component phase diagrams, although there is a considerable amount of research going into that as well, we're going to deal with multi-component phase diagrams. So typically when we're, uh, and really binary phase diagrams, ternary and quaternary get pretty crazy pretty quickly. Um, so let's look at an example of one phase diagram. So I have pure material A here, pure material B, oops, just not like that. Pure material A here, pure material B here, and I'm looking at XB, which is basically the mole fraction of B, which is basically the amount of B over XA plus XB. So that varies from zero to one. When XB equals one, then XB, the whole material is basically component B. So this is a an example of a binary lens diagram. Um, so it's something that we can kind of start off with and get our feet wet. So what we are seeing here, and actually we can kind of take a look at this um, as well. When we have a binary phase diagram as well, our Gibbs phase rule changes. So it's D, P, uh, D plus P equals C plus one now, because why? We're not, we're keeping temperature constant. So when I look at this phase diagram um, and we look at what's going on here, if I look through here at every composition at temperature one, I am basically liquid is my predominant phase. So at every composition, my liquid line energy curve is lower than my temperature curve. And we can see that here. Liquid is lower than my solid. Good. Makes sense. But something happens here. When I go to temperature two, I'm liquid, liquid, liquid. Then I cross into this two phase region where I'm no longer liquid or solid, but I am simultaneously a mixture of liquid plus solid. And then all until I get to here, this composition X sub S2, then I become solid again. So if I'm trying to draw the free energy curves for this temperature, and if I'm looking at this is XL2 and this is XS2, what we're saying is right now, liquid is lower here and our solid is up here because it's higher so it's gonna go like this and then some point over here we are basically lower and this is higher and the way that this actually works is we are going to show that we are going to have something called a common tangent at each of these points. And the common tangent is basically at this point right here and this point right here, our slopes are going to be equal to one another. And we define it in this section because this section we're liquid plus solid. Here we're liquid, here we're solid. And the common tangent is basically dg dxb are equal in both of these phases of the material of liquid and dgs of dxb. So that is basically the same thing as saying our chemical potentials are equal as well. So if the slopes are equal, equal we have a common tangent, we will have a region where we are both simultaneously liquid and solid. So we're not pure liquid, we're not pure solid because at each composition, I could drop down, phase separate, and now I've lowered my energy from the pure material here. So we're in a two-phase region. Now, and you can see the same thing will happen to T3 as well. We can name this, this region here, this line that separates liquid from the two-phase region is called our liquidus line. This red line here that separates solid from the two-phase region is the solidus line. Solidus liquidus. So we can go now and we can actually uh, find lots of things from uh, these kind of changes in composition. So for example, if I'm at this composition here, this X naught, if I want to figure out the composition that is liquid in the liquid phase, all I would do is just go see where I hit the liquidus and then that would be the composition this is the composition that's in the liquid. If I want the composition of the solid, I just run to the solidus, X solid B. And 
Let's say I want the fraction. This is just the composition of the liquid that exists. But how much liquid am I? How much solid am I? Well, if I want the fraction of liquid, I'm going to apply what's called the known as the lever rule. And I'm going to run, instead of going to the liquids, I'm going to actually go to the opposite. So my actual fraction will be the composition of the solid B minus composition not in the B over the total length of that tie line, which is going to be SB minus XB liquid. The fraction of the solid will be, I'm going to run opposite again. And so it'll be X not B just to keep it positive. Um, not actually, actually mathematically positive, not the other way around. XSB minus XBL. Excellent. So that would be how we actually calculate the fraction of liquid and the fraction of solid that exists. Um, excuse me. Didn't move this around. Um, I'm going to change my color. That exists in our material. So you can kind of see the same thing here. Now, uh, that is a good time to transition away from phases. Joke is a joke. Um, and we can start to look at some eutectic diagrams, congruent melting, and, SF, and more importantly, some invariant points. So we'll see you all in the next video. Thanks. Bye.